We've seen a lot of stories about veterans and post-traumatic stress disorder. But tonight, for the first time, we're able to show you new therapies that are changing the lives of vets and their families. Two million Americans have served in Afghanistan and Iraq. The Veterans Administration tells us that one out of five suffers from PTSD. One reason we're seeing so much of it is because many of our troops have been ordered on combat tours three, four, or even five times. The VA, overwhelmed by the need, decided to try new treatments that were originally designed for rape victims. Over two months, we were allowed to sit in and listen as our troubled veterans fought the war within. How can you live the life where everyone's afraid of you? You know, you go to town and people say, that's the crazy vet, don't mess with him. My wife told me, something's gotta change or we gotta leave. When you try to talk to somebody that hasn't been there, hasn't experienced it, they don't understand. And so you just kind of get laughed at. Yeah. The 16 men around this table arrived via Afghanistan, Iraq, or both. Some are here from Vietnam. I see that I do have, you know, that opportunity to pick myself up <laughs> at 63 years old and start all over again. They've started over again many times, but their path has led back to isolation, drugs, booze, and suicide attempts. Now, they're in the VA hospital in Little Rock, Arkansas, where they will live for eight weeks to break through the emotions that have derailed their lives. Depression, anxiety, anger, worthlessness, guilt. Guilt? Survivors, guilt, why, why me? Why am I alive? Why are they not? That's one of the hardest thoughts to deal with, you know. Eric Collins was wounded in a rocket attack in Afghanistan. Over a year, 17 of his buddies died. How did you cope with these feelings of anger and depression and guilt when you first got out? Alcohol and lots of it. <clears throat> That's where it started off. And alcohol led to my depression worsening, which led to more substance abuse, crack. Cocaine is my drug of choice. So <clears throat> my whole life spiraled and downward out of control. To take control, Collins volunteered for one of the new therapies called prolonged exposure. It forces him to work at remembering every detail of what he's tried to forget. Next thing I hear a loud boom. My ears start ringing. And I wake up, open my eyes, and I'm on the ground. Dr. Kevin Reeder runs the program. How are you feeling at this point? What were you what were you feeling at that time? My anger. I'm scared. I'm feeling pain. My leg, my back, my arm, my whole body. Okay, let's go from the beginning. Gotta keep doing this. Next thing I know, I hear a loud boom. They call it prolonged exposure because Collins will relive the story of the attack five times a session. There's a tape running, and he'll listen to his memory throughout the day to break its power. Tell me about prolonged exposure therapy. Sure. They've done everything they can to push these memories away. In the process, they haven't gained a full realization of the impact and the meaning that these stories have on their lives. I like to use the term, we're staring the dragon in the eye. Where did these therapies come from? A lot of these therapies came about uh, with survivors of physical or sexual abuse, those types of traumas. What are the similarities? The symptoms. The symptoms, the avoidance, the isolation, the hypervigilance, the extreme anxiety, irritability, inability to sleep, nightmares. Uh, same thing. Different sources, but same thing. I can't move my legs, can't move my arms. What does that do for you? It helps me to get past the guilt, survivor's guilt. And that's a building block. Every time I get through it, I get stronger. And it helps every time.
it's okay to be alive. Yeah. And you weren't sure that was true before. No, I didn't want to be alive. I wanted to. I wanted to be right there with them. I mean, the whole purpose of life was gone. To lose one of your buddies in a firefight, you don't want to see that. You don't want to feel that again. And so, yeah, when you get back to the rear, you're you're, you're pissed off because you don't want to get close to anybody anymore. Anthony Apolito experienced those multiple tours we talked about. He fought for a year in Afghanistan, spent one month at home, then went to Iraq, and later, Afghanistan again. The more deployments you get, the more time you spend out there, it just keeps on stacking. I mean, the first one, it hurts, but you don't get really time to heal. And then another one happens, and then another one. On his first tour, Apolito's patrol was ambushed. Two buddies died, and 20 were wounded. I had no weapon. No one had my back. They write about days friend. like that in the other key therapy here, okay. called Mr. cognitive Ryan, processing. After a trauma or multiple traumas, we'll often a person can believe the world just is a dangerous place. And so, what we do with CPT, cognitive processing therapy, is they write an impact statement at the beginning of therapy to show them the impact of the trauma on their lives and on their beliefs. Yes, I have worked on it. They read that statement about the trauma to the group, and then they discuss how their lives are still held in the grip of war. I never had a fear of life. I never had a fear of living. I never had a fear of going to the gas station and getting shot while I'm pumping gas because I needed gas in my car. Mm -hmm. They plow it. through a workbook that challenges their guilt with statements like, I shot a woman in combat, therefore I'm worthless. Or, my friend was killed by the enemy, I'm responsible. The Cognitive processing there, tries to put the war in the past and help them re-examine who they are today. It's tough. We noticed this but on Apolito's workbook. How many of you would go back to a deployed environment with your branch of service right now if that op opportunity was available to you? A lot of hands up. Real quick, why, why are your hands going up so much? You miss everything about how hard it was, how bitter you got, how angry and emotional, the things you saw. and it, You missed that camaraderie, that brotherhood, your buddy. Yes. Uh, that downtime, the struggling with things, man, you, it, it's everything, but you miss it, you mourn that. It's weird, it's that intimacy, it's, you know, I will never get that back. None of us will ever get that back. And that's a Gable Darbone never planned to be part of that brotherhood he mentioned. In 2001, he was out of high school, headed to college, but then 9-11 pushed him to an army recruiter instead. My mom, I remember she was crying in the kitchen. She goes, Gabe, well, you don't know what it's like for those boys coming back from Vietnam, how hard they had it, and uh, what they came back with. I said, Mom, it's different, though. We got attacked. We got attacked. I said, I'm volunteering. I said, I'll take anything. You know, I wanted to give my life. That's how strongly I felt. Because I joined a certain country. I joined to protect my freedoms, my future kids' freedoms. Darbone was one of the most thoughtful people we met. He served in Afghanistan and Iraq. One day, his unit was clearing a house. It exploded, and two buddies were burned. You can get angry, get mad. You know, we um, get very angry. And we took it out on certain people, you know. And you enjoyed it at the time. You did. You did things to Iraqis that you're not proud of. Of course. But that was surviving emotionally, mentally. I was never a violent man. I became different, slowly. Uh, we all have that instinct, that survival instinct. And that survival instinct is very real. At home, the survival instinct didn't let go. Darbone was like most other vets here. Certain triggers brought the instinct back. The smell of diesel returned him to his combat outpost. Crowds made him fearful. I started isolating. I couldn't do anything. My dad had to come over and mow my lawn. Mom had to come over and pay my bills. I just, I wouldn't leave my house for a day or two. I didn't want to make small talk. I didn't want somebody to ask me, hey, how you doing? I, I didn't like those words. 
you know, I just, I got very secluded, like a recluse. For nine years, Darbone told himself he was okay or would be okay. And then the folks at work urged him to get help. This was Darbone after seven weeks of self-examination as they all prepared to go home. And when I went in, I had a heart. And uh, I volunteered. I don't blame nothing on anybody. I don't blame nothing on myself. I don't blame nothing on my leaders. In fact, I had good leaders. I blame nothing on the Army. I think it's just the way it is. And it sucks. I hate it. I hate it. I don't want to go home. You know, I'm... Oh. People would always ask me when I came back, so what do, what do I tell my boyfriend what do, when he comes back, or how do I approach this to my son? I said, when he starts talking, just listen. Uh, yeah, don't, um, uh, don't judge it. You know, just listen. There is probably a soldier or a Marine sitting alone watching this on television right now. Thousands of them, you might imagine. And to them, you would say what? I hope you can find the courage to get help because all you're doing is killing yourself. And you don't have to live like that. There is good people in this world that are willing to help you and it's been the hardest thing for me to do, but I wouldn't have changed coming here for the world. In our two months here, 28 men sat around the table. Three couldn't endure it and dropped out. The VA finds that nationwide, about 77% graduate from this with a drop in their PTSD symptoms. It's progress, but they also have a saying around here. There is no cure. I don't think there is a cure for what we're talking about. We're talking about living and putting people more in touch with their lives uh, and emotions and good days and bad days. This isn't cancer. We can't go get it. We have to teach people that they can live with this and live a valued life, a life they want. After eight weeks here, how you doing? How am I doing? <laughs> I don't know yet. That's an honest answer. But I know deep down inside, things will work themselves out.